everyone, this is Elad from Astrolab Diagnostics and in this video I want to uh, discuss different clustering algorithms and the idea of a taxonomy for clustering algorithm with the motivation of uh, making these algorithms a bit more accessible um, to different audiences uh, beyond bioinformaticians and computational biologists. And just briefly recapping in a previous video I was talking about an analysis pipeline, the idea of taking uh, raw single cell data and converting it into meaningful biological insights. And I was talking about the idea that the pipeline has these different components. And when you want to analyze your experiment, uh, you play this game of a multiple choice questionnaire where for each one of these, uh, of these uh, steps, you can choose one or more algorithms. Specifically, I used Mischenmeyer et al. as an example, and um, they use uh, different uh, traditional plots for cleaning the data, and then a combination of traditional gating and phenograph and metaclustering for feature generation, and then they used fold changes and t-test for statistical analysis. And I want to take a closer look at this block um, and specifically talk about clustering algorithms. So a clustering algorithm, um, the definition is that it's an algorithm that groups objects so that objects in the same group are more similar to each other than objects in other groups. And translating this into the language of high complexity cytometry, an object is an event in an FCS file. Ideally, it should be a cell, uh, assuming that you clean the data correctly. The similarity is the distance across all channels. The lower the distance, the, um, the higher the similarity. And a group is one of these clusters that we've been talking about. So a clustering algorithm converts distances into groups. And it's one of these ways in which you can take the raw data and make it into features that have some biological sense, that have some context behind it, so you can think and talk about uh, the data in a more meaningful way. And for the taxonomy of clustering algorithms, there's, I think, three main questions that you should ask. First of all, what is the underlying math? And I would argue that for many users, this is the least important question. Um, because you're more, you care more about results than theory, but it is helpful to be aware of some of the terms there. Then, what is the, the critical parameter that you need to set when running the algorithm? And finally, how can you run the algorithm other than writing R code? So, running the algorithm, you can always get the R or the Python package and write some code, but ideally there's some utilities that allow you to do it more easily. So, starting with a fan favorite, um, the Flowsome algorithm, um, it was published by Van Gessen et al. in 2015, and it's actually based on a much older algorithm called self-organizing maps, um, also referred to as Cohonen maps. And um, the way a self-organizing map is, works is that it trains an artificial neural network, the same neural networks that people know from deep learning. Um, however, while in deep learning, the neural network is uh, trained on classified data, for uh, self-organizing maps, it is unclassified, and we're just trying to fit the network to the data uh, based on the distances that we talked about before. And this cute animation from, um, from Wikipedia actually explains it pretty well. You start with this grid, which is the network, and then you slowly take these dots on the different edges, uh, different uh, vertices in the grid, and pull them toward the data. Um, the critical parameter for FlowSum is the number of clusters, and in fact, it is specified as two parameters, XDIM and YDIM, corresponding to the um, to the columns and the rows of this network. And one of the cool things that Van Gessen et al. has shown is that you can play with different values of XDIM and, and YDIM as long as their multiplication, the K, is the same, you would get comparable results. So uh, the critical parameter here is how many clusters you want, and Flowsum is available through Cytobank, through a Flowjo plugin. I think it's one of the easier ones to run. The next algorithm is Phenograph. And the underlying math for Phenograph is a method uh, called Levain method. And Levain um, looks, for, uh, looks at a graph and it's looking for connected, um, connected components in that graph. So the first thing you need to do with Phenograph is convert your data into a graph. Um, specifically, Phenograph does this by using a k-nearest neighbors graph and then using a uh, pruning step 
uh, using um, another distance metric. And then you run the Levain method to find highly connected groups within that grep using a method, using a metric called modularity. And um, one of the interesting things about the Levain method is that it's actually very fast. Uh, however, Finograph is quite slow, and the reason is that building the graph is a time-consuming step. Once you have the graph, running Louvain is super fast. Um, the critical parameter for Finograph is how many neighbors you want in the graph, and the more neighbors you have, the denser the graph, the less clusters you're going to have. Unlike Flowsum, you cannot set an exact number of clusters, but you can play with these k values um, and try to get the number of clusters that you want. Um, Finograph is available as a Flojo plugin and it is available through the site of kit R package and um, while it does require a minimal amount of typing in R, it is pretty straightforward to use. And finally, the next algorithm is XShift. And the math for XShift is uh, very similar to Finograph in some ways. You start with the Kenyon's neighbors graph, almost the same Kenyon's neighbors graph you have from uh, Finograph, except you don't have the pruning step. And then um, you, uh, you find centroids. And these are uh, points in the graph, vertices, um, whose density is a local maxima. In other words, you're looking for points that are connected to a lot of other points um, and that are connected to most points in their neighborhood. Once again, the critical parameter for XShift is the number of neighbors, similarly to Finograph, and it is available both as a Flojo plugin and um, as a package called Vortex, which you can download from uh, the Nolan Lab website. So, let me know if you have any questions about clustering algorithms, about the taxonomy I presented here, or any specific clustering algorithm that comes to mind. A quick sales pitch, um, there is a lot of decisions in analyzing your site of data. Astrolabe can help you automate all of them and can get you from raw data to biological insights in a couple of hours. So if you're struggling with any site of data sets, if you're acquiring a large Aurora data set in the coming days, if you have 200 Fortessa samples that are waiting for your manual gating, please reach out to us. We can help you analyze them. Thank you and have a good day.